For 30 years, the bizarre death of an unknown man at a McDonald's has haunted Anchorage, Alaska. Who was the Alaskan flagpole jumper? The city of Anchorage, Alaska was going through the usual hustle and bustle on August 23, 1989, as locals went about their daily lives. The McDonald's located on Mountain View Drive just switched from their breakfast menu to lunch to serve the incoming rush. However, that normalcy faltered when a customer spotted a naked man running behind the McDonald's around 11.30 that morning. By the time Officer Fred Jones was flagged down by a concerned citizen, there was already a crowd of people watching in amused curiosity at the strange man. Officer Jones stepped out of his car just in time to see the man run from the left side of the McDonald's and towards the three flagpoles standing out in front. The bearded man paused, ran to the tallest of the three, then shimmied his way up 30 feet to the top of the pole, much to the surprise and horror of those below. Officer Jones called out to the man, trying to get his attention and hopefully get him to safely climb down the pole, but as onlookers gawked, the unknown bearded man simply ignored the officer and the crowd. Instead, it appeared that he was having his own conversation with the eagle ornament on top of the pole. By that point, another officer, James Loesch, arrived to the scene and to see what was going on and to offer assistance to Officer Jones. Officer Loesch went back to his patrol car to use the loudspeaker, but before he could, the screams of the onlookers made him turn around and look up. The bearded man had wrapped his legs tightly around the pole and stretched his arms out as though he wanted to fly. He pushed himself from the pole and dived head first into the concrete ground below, landing less than six feet from Officer Loesch. An army medic who was in the crowd ran to the bearded man and was able to get him stabilized enough to be rushed to Humana Hospital. Unfortunately, the man was pronounced dead the next morning. Officer Loesch searched the scene for any clothing, bags, or identification to help identify this unknown man. However, he was unable to find anything in the immediate area, and this led to the police to perform a more extensive search, but they still came up empty. The unknown man had no tattoos, birthmarks, or unique scars that could potentially lead to his true identity. Also, the toxicology report revealed that there were no drugs in his system. Sergeant Mike Grimes of the Anchorage Police Department was assigned to the case and without any clues other than the unknown man's body. Sergeant Grimes sent dental records and fingerprints of the unknown man to the FBI and missing persons databases in all 50 states. He checked mental health facilities and even sent the case to Interpol with no luck. Sergeant Grimes would say of the case, it was like he was beamed from a spaceship. With no leads, the unknown man was buried as John Doe. It was a cold case until 2011 when a woman from California was convinced that the flagpole jumper was her brother, Gordon Lopez. In 1986, Gordon Lopez was a 21-year-old college student from Redding, Oregon. He cleaned out his apartment, then sent his tuition check back to his family saying that they would never see him again. Gordon Lopez was last seen on January 3rd, 1986. None of his possessions, including his car, were ever found. Terry Mihawk, who was 18 at the time of her brother's disappearance, described her brother as a funny, loving, and an academic heavyweight at Reed College. Mihawk said that her brother didn't live in the best conditions in Oregon. His apartment was a moldy basement apartment where she even lived for a time after her mother kicked her out at 16. One day, Terry's mother received a letter from Gordon. Terry opened it since her mother and her sister were in Japan at the time. Terry said, so I opened it and found the note that he left. He wrote that she would never see him again and that he had no regrets for the past. Terry never stopped looking for her brother and so when she discovered the missing and unidentified person's system, she began her search. After days of searching, she found the Anchorage, Alaska flagpole case and she immediately made the connection to her brother. Her reasoning for the connection was not baseless because the description sounded exactly like her brother. Tall, curly dark hair with a beard, about 200 pounds. Not only that, Terry knew her brother had connections to Alaska and always suspected he would run off there. He also told her that if he was to take his own life, he would do it in public. 
Terry and Gordon had many problems with their mother, who Terry described as verbally abusive and with a drinking problem. So when she saw the date of the flagpole jumper's death, her heart skipped a beat. The man had died on their mother's birthday. Was it possible that Gordon died on that day to send a message to his mother? To Terry, all of the pieces seemed to fit together. In 2015, Terry Meehawk paid to have the body exhumed and a DNA test was taken. Unfortunately for Terry, the DNA didn't match. Both Terry Meehawk and the Anchorage Police Department were back to square one. Today, there are still no leads into who was the flagpole jumper. On the subreddit Unresolved Mysteries, Redditors theorized that the flagpole jumper could have suffered from hyperthermia or had a severe mental breakdown. It's also been noted that it is possible that he was from out of state. Anchorage is known for having a large homeless population as well as transients in and out of the city. Today, the flagpole jumper is a story that's been told to generations of Anchorage police officers. Though hopefully, this story one day will be solved and a family missing a loved one will be able to have closure. If you have any information, please call the Anchorage Police Department at 907-786-8900. Hi guys, thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. So what do you think of this case? Do you think that he was a transient that came out of nowhere? Do you think that he was a local? Please let us know in the comments. Thank you.